Welcome dear students in this video in which we will discuss the attachments and the actions of uh, scapular region muscles or muscles of the shoulder region with simple animations in order to be easy to understand. First of all, I want to uh, uh, show the names of these muscles. We have firstly a superficial muscle called deltoid muscle with its anterior fibers, middle fibers and posterior fibers. And if we hide this muscle, we will find the rest of the muscles. Anteriorly, I have muscle called subscapularis muscle. And posteriorly, I have the rest of the scapular region muscles, namely supraspinatus above the spine of the scapula, infraspinatus below the spine of the scapula, teres minor, and finally teres major muscle. Okay, if you want to talk about each muscle with its details of origin, insertion, and action, we will start by deltoid muscle with its three fibers, anterior, middle, and posterior. So this is the details of origin and insertion of deltoid. As you see, it takes origin corresponding to the insertion of trapezius muscle. If we remember that trapezius is inserted into the back of the clavicle, medial aspect of the acromion, and the upper lip of the crest of the spine of the scalp. Now, the origin of deltoid corresponding to this insertion. So, it will be the same V-shaped area, but from outer side, away from the body. Uh, the front of the clavicle, there is the first part of the origin, lateral aspect of the acromion process of the scapula and the lower border of the crest of the spine of the scap. So, this inner V area is for insertion of trapezius, and this outer V-shaped area is the origin of deltoid. The muscle will be converged to be inserted into the V-shaped insertion in the tuberosity in the lateral aspect of the humerus, which is called deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. As you see, the muscle taking origin from clavicle and scapula and going to be inserted into the humerus, so the actions will be on the humerus. So the actions will be on shoulder joint, movement of the humerus at the shoulder joint. And because it had three fibers, anterior fibers, middle fibers, and posterior fibers, so it has three actions. The anterior fibers will form um, a flexion of the shoulder joint. The posterior fibers will form extension of the shoulder joint while the whole muscle or the middle fibers will form abduction of the shoulder joint. So the main action of deltoid will be abduction of the humerus at the shoulder joint, as you see. And in the literature, you will find that Abduction of the humerus of by deltoid is done from 15 degrees to 90 degrees. And after a few minutes, I will know uh, the muscle that will initiate the abduction of the shoulder. Okay. Now we can go again to our uh, view to see the rest of other muscles. Uh, I will have to hide deltoid totally like this anterior middle and posterior fibers to see what's next this muscle is called subscapularis muscle because it's present on the subscapular fossa of the scapula the origin very easily the subscapular fossa and the insertion is in the lesser tuberosity of the humerus so the muscle crossing anterior to the shoulder joint and the fibers are horizontal and attached to the front of the humerus exactly at the lesser tuberosity of the humerus so the action of this muscle will be medial rotation and if you remember that any muscle attached to the front of upper part of the humerus will make medial rotation for example pectoralis major and latissimus dorsi that we saw in other videos and here we have also subscapularis so the action will be medial rotation 
of the humerus at the shoulder joint as you see medial rotation of the humerus at the shoulder joint what are the muscles performing this medial rotation i have pectoralis major i have subscapularis i have latissimus dorsi and i have also the anterior fibers of deltoid okay let's rotate the model posteriorly like this to see the rest of other muscles and they are supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor and teres major let's see supraspinatus from its name it takes origin from the supraspinous fossa as you see and crossing above the shoulder joint to be inserted in the upper impression of the greater tuberosity of the humerus and because these fibers crossing above the shoulder joint the same as middle fibers of the toid the action will be also shoulder abduction like the toid but putting in mind that supraspinatus will initiate the abduction from 0 to 15 degrees only and from 15 degrees to 90 degrees this will be the action of deltoid muscle so the action of supraspinatus is to initiate or begin the abduction of the shoulder joint and the action of the uh, deltoid is to complete this abduction from 15 degrees to 90 degrees okay what about the other muscles i have infraspinatus infraspinatus so the origin will be the infraspinous fossa of the scapula as to see as you see and will be inserted into the middle impression of the greater tuberosity of the humerus so the muscle crossing posterior to the shoulder joint and the fibers are horizontal and attached to the posterior aspect of the humerus the same will be the teres minor the same will be the teres minor muscle taking origin as you see from the upper two thirds of the lateral border of the scapula and inserted into the last impression of the greater tuberosity of the humerus so both infraspinates and the teres minor are crossing horizontally posterior to the shoulder joint to be inserted into the greater tuberosity of the humerus at the posterior aspect of the upper part of the humerus so the action of both muscles will be lateral rotation of the shoulder and this is called the lateral rotators of the shoulder joint so as you see this is the humerus laterally rotate by the action of posterior fibers of deltoid and the action of infraspinatus and teres minor okay So the lateral rotators of the humerus at the shoulder joint are posterior fibers of deltoid, infraspinatus, and teres minor. The three muscles have a common feature <coughs> of crossing posterior to the shoulder joint. Very nice. Lastly, I have the last muscle which is called teres major. Teres major. The teres major takes origin from the dorsal aspect of the lower angle of the scapula and going to be inserted anteriorly in the humerus anteriorly in the medial lip of the bicipital groove to complete the family of the bicipital groove of the humerus so bicipital groove of the humerus receives the insertion of both pectoralis major and the teres major and in between there there is latissimus dorsi in the floor of the groove so teres major have a common feature with latissimus dorsi what is this common feature it's coming from behind and going to be inserted anteriorly in the humerus so if you want to apply the rule the teres major is coming from posterior to anterior so it will perform extension of the humerus at the shoulder joint and because it's inserted anteriorly in the humerus so it will perform medial rotation of the humerus at the shoulder joint and let's remember the extension of the humerus at the shoulder joint in this video you see it's done by 
two muscles coming from posterior aspect, latissimus dorsi and teres major, with the help of posterior fibers of the thigh. And this is the lateral view of the action, extension of the humerus at the shoulder joint. The other action is medial rotation of the shoulder, which is done by the muscles attached to the front of the humerus, namely pectoralis major, anterior fibers of deltoid, subscapularis, as you see, and also teres major. So, the medial rotation of the shoulder is performed by muscles inserted into the front of the upper part of the humerus, the muscles of the bicipital groove with subscapularis muscle, and the muscles performing lateral rotation of the shoulder will be the muscles inserted into the back of the upper part of the humerus, like infraspinatus and teres minor. And finally, I hope we enjoyed this video and the action of these muscles became easy for you and goodbye to the next videos.